Hey guys, uh, this is the recap for The Real Housewives of Miami, episode 16, Melting Pot Meltdown. Guys, I didn't know this was the last episode of the season. I was so gag and I truly, 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 truly enjoyed this season. This season has been nothing but phenomenal. Thanks to the girls and being vulnerable and being open to share their lives with us. The good, the bad, and the ugly guys we even got a sneak peek of the reunion and oh my god oh my god i cannot wait like this episode was a little bit longer than the others so i thought i felt like we were being a little bit spoiled and i'm like these girls cannot give us any more like is there any more for them to for them to give to us gosh so where we last left off in the episode is pretty much you know, Marina is now standing for her son, Lenny. And he's and she's telling Lisa how, you know, look at what you have done. Take a look at what you can be accountable for. Marina wants to tell Lisa that, look, you, you gave him an opportunity to cheat. You take time out to travel, go to this place, go to that place. And she mentions New York. And Lisa had to let her know and clarify, well, when she went to New York, it was a trip to get some dental work done. So if Lenny thinks that he can't be alone and his ex this is his excuse to cheat, then he has bigger issues. It's not with her because, come on, Lenny's a grown man. He can spend some time by himself. But... Maybe he's just so much of a narcissist that, you know, he requires a lot of attention and focus because he's busy at work. And then now when he's home, he, his wife is not there. So he needs some entertainment. But that is not his excuse to do what he did to Lisa. And this kind of gives Marina some time to realize, you know, OK, she tries to be fair between Lisa and her son, but that's not possible. She's going to be biased. She's going to be biased towards her son. Like she have finally had a chance to spoke into her son to get some clarity on some things of some situation. And, you know, she brought up um, Lisa brought up how Lenny has been doing this for quite some time that he's not an innocent person. She tr tries to go and says, what about all the girls that he would message through Instagram? And, you know, Marina, she had a response for that. She's like, well, I talked to my son and it's been like he mentioned that it was just only innocent messages. But Lisa had uh, had to say otherwise. She had to say that. No, 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 no. Him. She has access to her phone. So she's seen the, the DMs. She's seen the messages and they're not innocent. She would say that some of the messages were quite flirtatious and it was many girls that he would message but what's interesting enough the one that he's with now was the one she had issue with in the past so this was going on for quite some time this is not a shocker to lisa if anything it infuriates her because she knew it all along but she 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 couldn't like pretty much do anything about it because it seems like it was such an intense situation where they're sending forever signs i love you you know very intimate things to each other so lisa feels like wow i really watched this all develop and happen and she tried to you know get in the in the middle of this to stop but lenny was not having it i felt like after learning this Lenny is such a selfish, very narcissistic person. Like, he does not care how this affects Lisa at all. He actually says to his mother, like, this for her will take some time for her to, like, you know, get over it. And Marina is like, I, I've talked to Lenny. I've told him, like, you know, I see Lisa. And Lisa, she's just not doing okay. She's depressed. And Lenny is so cold-hearted. He says, give it time. Just give it time. I'm like, wow. Lisa, you know, she gave up her life in Canada to come to Miami where she doesn't know anybody. Uh, she only has Lenny. So her life have pretty much revolved around Lenny. 
And I think when you have that kind of dynamic, the minute you try to focus on yourself or open up to yourself to other opportunities, this is going to trigger Lenny in a way to feel like, no, 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 no. I pulled you from another country to pretty much be focused on me. I took you from being with your friends, your home, everything you were familiar with in Canada, and I plopped you here in Miami. And this is what we kind of call love bombing because who doesn't want to come to Miami, see the beautiful skylines, see the beautiful water, see the beautiful people, and be in an environment that's pretty much paradise. So that, of course, is going to appeal to Lisa, but I feel like her issues with Lenny goes way back to how they even started a relationship with each other. While they were together for quite some time, I still think that, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. You know, Lisa, she's the people pleaser. I feel like she devotes, gives all her energy to to Lenny. And from being on this show, it gave her such a platform where she can actually come to her own, have her own identity, have her own money, and have people want to be interested and invested into her. And I feel like maybe Lenny could have been jealous. You know, this is all speculation, but I feel like this would not be a shock to kind of see from Lenny's perspective that He felt neglected, as he says to his mother. Lisa's never home. She always go out. She stays out too late. Why is she not at home? And it's not because he misses her. It could be he misses the attention and the the, the devotion that she would give to him. And, you know, I think once they had the kids, you know, the kids kind of take that attention away too as well. So it seems as though Lenny was competing for attention and unfortunately he find that attention elsewhere and i feel like this is this could be a whole you know dissection of lisa and her relationship cuz while they were together as i said before they were together for a like a long time under what conditions was the relationship under for it to be lasting that long i i'm pretty sure there's a set of rules set of guidelines that she had to follow And then when that didn't satisfy Lenny anymore, and, you know, Lisa's breaking these rules and finding her freedom, that that dissatisfied Lenny. And, of course, this would be the result. Either Lisa had to accept that, unless Lenny had to say, no, I want you out the picture completely. But, oh my God, poor thing. I'm rooting for Lisa. She has a lot of supporters. A lot of people definitely rallying for her. And we want, you know, we fell in love with Lisa. You know, Lenny is showing his true colors. And it doesn't look good. He's trying to recover with Marina. Marina's trying to save the image of her son, you know. But, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 you know, I kind of want to hear from Lenny. I kind of want him to, you know, talk to Andy and give his side. Because I feel like, you know... Lisa has been able to say how she feels about the situation. And maybe Lenny, he gets his say through, you know, using the media to get a certain message out. But I feel like us as a people, us as the viewers, I want to hear from Lenny. I want to hear straight from his mouth about the situation. Maybe we're missing a part. And, you know, I would like to hear to hear his side of things because, of course, we've seen a lot from Lisa and we get a little bit of a glimpse of what's in Lenny's mind through Marina. But, oh, my God, like three minutes in the episode and it's intense. It's intense. That is too much to even so to dissect in the first three minutes. And I'm like, damn, what's coming up next for this in this episode? Um, we get a girl's lunch. We get a girl's lunch with Gertie and Larsa. And I like that Larsa is hanging out with the girls because I would think like, you know, we haven't seen, you know, these, well, we did see these two together when, they, when um, Nicole sent out invites and it happens, happened to be so that Larsa received the invite when Gertie was there. So it was questioned whether that was a setup for Gertie and Nicole to kind of have this situation happen. 
But I like to see the budding relationships between Gertie and Larsa. Those two can definitely have fun together. They love to dress up. So it was good to see that they were taking time to have a girls' lunch, just the two of them. So what happened in the girls' lunch is that they talk about the trip. Larsa, she's so interesting. Larsa thought it was a fantastic trip. Like, it was phenomenal. It was amazing. It was relaxing. I'm like, girl... I can, well, okay, I can see how it was relaxing for Larsa because the girls weren't going after Larsa. Like, uh, her and Nicole, they settled their situation. And I don't think Larsa is in um, Adriana's bad side either, you know. They bond a little bit in that trip. So I feel like Larsa kind of meant her her relationships, her friendships with these girls uh throughout this season so it was a good trip it was a fantastic trip for larsa but gertie she looked at her she's like girl no (laughs) there was so much going on so much nonsense so much things being thrown people raising their voice and you know (sighs) larsa she says well I went to the sep- the other party that, that that was at Marisol, and it was a fun party. And, you know, she sees the girls are upset, and they're not willing to deal with Adriana. And Gertie was like, well, I got the text invite to go to Marisol's too as well, but I already committed to go to Adriana's event. And so Gertie said she had a great time there, too, like, to let you know that you missed out. And, you know, Gertie, it's under her heart to want to throw a party to kind of bring the girls together so, you know, we can squash this. And she wants the girls to just have a sister moment and, you know, have fun and kind of settle things. And, you know, Gertie wants the girls to give Adriana a second chance. But Gertie has to realize this is not Adriana's second chance. This could be like the fifth the 10th, the 11th, like they have gone through so much to get like, as was mentioned before by the girls that they have so much history, you know, together with Adriana. So this is not Adriana's second chance, you know? And so Gertie, she wants to throw a party, a melting pot party. And she wants to use this as a way for the girls to smooth things. And Larsa's like, I'm not hearing this. Like, the girls do not, would not be interested. They do not want to go there if Adriana is there. And, you know, as what I thought, since I didn't think this was the last episode of the season, I thought, okay, no, these girls are going to throw another party on the side. But since this is the last episode, of course they're going to be there. I don't think I don't think they're gonna miss out on a Gertie's event because you know Gertie has already established herself. She was a part of Vogue. She throws great parties, so they're not gonna miss Gertie's party for sure, you know. And I don't think Adriana is at a place where she can miss filming. You know, that's money. Miss filming to kind of adjust to get her side across because remember, we are all gonna see this, and we're not not only. Is Alexia Marisol judging Adriana? The whole world, the whole Bravo universe is looking at Adriana like, girl, what the hell? And this can be a turning point, whether a deciding factor in whether she will actually be on for next season, you know? So she has a lot of ground to make and try to recover from this situation. So, of course, Adriana is not going to, you know, be scared to come to this event. And, of course, she's going to come super, super, super humble to recover what she did, putting her foot in her mouth, and uh, she's going to try to recover. So, of course... So we next get a scene with Adriana and she's headed to the music studio. And guess whose music studio she's at? Not not for nothing, but oh my God. She is in the studio with Emilio Estefan, okay? Grammy award winning producer and musician who works with the best of the best in the Latin industry, in the Latin market. Guys. I can't believe I can't believe it. I'm like Adriana's song is good, but I I you know it wasn't it wasn't for me. Maybe there could be like a good remix, you know. It wasn't bad, but I felt like okay, it wasn't for me. And you know, I like that the girls they give 
respect where it's where they give credit where credit is due and they they like adriana's music so i was so impressed i'm like girl look at you booking like girl if you don't get this gig you got another gig coming for you but you know it'd be best for you to stay on this platform oh my god emilio estefan he worked with celia cruz he worked with of course gloria estefan of course he worked with j-lo so you know even though j-lo you know j-lo is j-lo but you know he's he's one of the best people to work with if you want your music to be accepted in the latin market like good for you adriana yay so they're having a talk and he actually wants to work with adriana because he feels like she hasn't been yet properly produced and he see, has a, a little demo he wants to show her. And, you know, this had me even emotional. To see Adriana be emotional and talking about, you know, having the American dream. Just bringing a regular girl from Brazil, coming to America. And, this is, and now she's in a room with a Grammy Award winning music and producer, Emilio Estefan. Yes! These are what moments are to be trashed these are the moments to have to treasure and to always reflect to keep yourself humble to remember your roots and see like you can not get in the way of your greatness so i was happy for adriana to have this moment because she was she was she was going through it like she let made, made us feel like she was going through it so this was like a winning moment to bring up you know her attitude to bring up you know morale for herself like yes you're doing things so let's let's keep it to a positive and the other girls are gonna be so gagged so gagged but you know they they support her so we look forward to her music with emilio estefan we heard a little bit of demo so i i, I can't wait to hear the final the final take for Adriana's collab with Emilio Estefan, Grammy Award winning musician and producer. Go girl. So that was a cute moment. We next get a scene at Lisa's home. And Lisa, she's wearing she's watching the kids, but what the hell she got on? She got on a whole corset set top with some jeans and some heels, laying on the ground with her kids, playing with her kids. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Yes, Miss Miami Mommy. Like, yes, uh, Lenny, <laughs> I, I don't know what you, what you have after for you, for you and your relationship. But Lisa, she's, she, she, she's a ride or die. She, she looks fantastic. She take care of those kids and she would do everything for those kids. Uh, she was talking to Logan. Logan said, I just want to go swim with the dolphins. And then, of course, this is like, okay, we're going to go swim with some dolphins. And she's going to make that happen. That is so good. And their kids are so cute, so sweet. So, at Lisa's home, the girls, they pull up. You know, we have Marisol, and she walks in the kids, and it's just a mess. And Alexia, she walks in as well. And the girls, the girls are like, okay, we're here, but is is he going to be here? Is Lenny going to be here? And she's like, Lisa's like, oh, you know, he usually typically comes by around 5 or 6. And they're like, what time is it now? Is he going to come here now? And I'm like gagging for them because they seriously look concerned because, you know, they were talking about Lenny, you know, they were, they had their their feedback about the whole situation of it all. And so Lisa's like, no, no, no. I gave him a heads up that my girls are coming over so he won't come over. So the girls are like, let's go get a, a something to drink. They go to the wine cabinet. Oh, it's not even a cabinet. It's like a whole room. A glass room container. What do you call that? <laughs> it's big, okay? And so the girls are like, oh, what should we drink? What should we drink? And Lisa's like, let's have the most expensive bottle here. Like, it doesn't matter. Is he going to be mad? I don't care. And I'm like, Lisa, this is your stuff too, girl. Enjoy your stuff. Like, I hate, I hate when people like cherish those things to never be used and like oh it's only for special occasions no live now live live okay and i'm happy to see lisa you know making some jokes about it and you know that's part of coping i see i see lisa lisa you know she's sad about it but you know she's coping and you know some people they cope through comedy 
And so the girls, they're chatting, and Lisa is like, guys, let me tell you about Adriana's party. And you know, they don't want to hear about Adriana's party. That They skipped it for a reason. And Lisa's like, guys, Adriana wants to make it right, and she wants to have a conversation, and she feels truly remorseful of the situation, and, and, and be mindful, me and the girls at her party were telling her what she did was wrong, and she understands, she felt like she wasn't in the right place of mind when she said that, that it was like, it, 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 it she was so lonely, she's so depressed, and Alexia and Marisol, their face, they're like, they don't want anything to do with this. They don't want anything to do with the conversation. And Lisa's like, come on, do not forget the history that we have. And Alexia's like, girl, what history? I hope the history is not just because they've been on the show together. I hope, well, no, well, no, no. Alexia, she tells us later that Adriana knew her in her situation with Frankie before the accident and after the accident. So uh, they go back, okay? They go back. And the girls are just not interested, and rightfully so. I mean, Adriana, she came from Marisol for, for about a man that she don't even talk to anymore, like she's not even interested in. And then Alexia goes and talk about our beloved Frankie. Frankie? Like, no, girl. Like, this is like, you really put your foot deep into your mouth, into your stomach. Like, girl. So I'm like... Mm. me not knowing that this is the final episode i'm like mm, this is not gonna happen this is not gonna end well but anywho we then get a scene with julia and martina and they are out on a date and usually you know with julia scenes you know they're like you know filler scenes to me they're filler scenes but i love when she's filming with martina i'm like martina what you gonna say what you gonna do what you gonna eat like girl so you know they're being cute they're being so fl- flirty. I'm like, okay, Spice. Like, this is too much for me. Like, is this peachy? Like, what What? what the hell? What the hell? This is X-rated. <laughs> okay, not X-rated, but it was, like, a little bit past PG-13. You needed an adult for this, at least. And they're so cute together. I hate, like, they try to make... Maybe it is a thing. I'm not... I don't see it, though. I just think, you know, they're going through that normal, you know, flow in a relationship where you have ups and downs. But it's not like a down, down. It's like a, okay, you could take me out on a date night here and there. Like, come on. Focus on me. Focus on me. And, you know, we know that they were working through a rough patch. But they're so cute together. They're so flirty. They're like, do you want to skip dinner? And Martina's like, well, I still, I want to be with you, but I'm still kind of hungry. I'm quite hungry. And I'm like, guys, please, please enjoy your little date. It was super cute and such a cute, sweet scene for them to have. I think I prefer seeing her on a date with Martina than um, uh, Julia doing like, you know, maybe like, getting some eggs playing with her goat like i feel like i like her in a scene with martina better like i understand julia she's new and you know we're we're still getting to know her but yeah 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 i feel like she's a good addition in a sense that she's able to formulate friendships with the other girls. I feel like what's weighing her down is that she has to be very attentive towards Adriana. And luckily for Adriana, Julia is super supportive. She's willing to put aside her making friendships with the other girls to take care of Adriana. As opposed to what we see in Potomac where Mia, she brought in her friend Jackie and you know Mia's going through so much and she ha- she doesn't want to do with, with anything when it comes to Jacqueline with Jack not Jackie Jacqueline. So it's nice to see the friendships between Adriana and Julia, but I feel like it's pulling us away from actually seeing Julia kind of grow into this franchise. I would like to see her for next season. Let's see. Let's let's give her a chance, guys. We then got a scene with Nicole, and she's at her home. I love when we go to her home. I wish we could see more of her home. But I feel like we see the same, like, authorized spaces. Like, we not allowed to go in another room. I would love to see your, see your home, Nicole. I know it was sold, but it, it was like, we, we don't get to see all of it, okay? 
And so Nicole is home and she invites her therapist over to kind of help her facilitate a conversation with her father. And, you know, the therapist, she's super reasonable. She's like, you know, I like her. She's not like, she's very straight to the point. And the suggestions she make, you know, I, it's very practical. You know, she doesn't take Nicole's side. She doesn't take the dad's side. She's pretty, very neutral, you know, as opposed to some other concerts we've seen on the Housewives franchise where they seem to just, uh, take the side of whoever's paying for that session so i like how neutral this therapist was and you know what she wanted to discuss is pretty much how uh, what her dad how he felt like at the engagement party because you know they're slowly he's slowly getting back into nicole's life so the engagement party is what where we saw him and her together not only with family but with friends and on tv and, you know, the dad said, I behave. I was good. And, you know, he is trying. And you see he's trying with the best of his capabilities, okay? The best to his capabilities, okay? And, you know, Nicole... When Nicole gave us an impression of him not doing the best and that he's here and not there. And from what I've seen, you know, he seems quite loving. Like, he's a nice guy. And I, I, I want to understand Nicole because there's a reason behind all this. But it, ju- it does seem like it's a lot of past judgments that are still being carried today. So I want to understand what is missing. And we learned that through this therapy session, you know. Uh, the therapist suggested to him have he said sorry to his daughter. And, you know, he is not, he, he seems like he's not ready, but he also doesn't feel feel like he should apologize for who he has been okay who he has been as in that's the past today he is not that same person but i do feel like you know especially talking to your daughter you're talking to your baby girl so you're not talking to her as an adult but you're trying to heal her inner child and how she felt in that moment you know children have a hard time in understanding things of topics that are so much bigger than their what they are at that time you know And so what's interesting enough, we kind of hear from Nicole's inner child and her inner child speaks from a place of feeling abandoned. And we understand her dad's position and her dad's position is feeling that if I'm around my daughter, only bad things happen. So I want to protect my daughter and come at a place of protection and stay away from her because he and she had went through scenarios where every time they were together, things would happen to Nicole. Nicole was ran over by his friend because he wanted to be with his friend and his daughter at the same time, you know? So it's so interesting. And I even had that moment in reflection too, where different minds and how they have different viewpoints of the same situation that we're trying to digest. Like, we're like different minds that kind of skew our viewpoint. Like, he has a viewpoint, she has a viewpoint, and this is what it is. So, it was nice to see them actually talk what it is. And it's like a moment of aha for the daughter, because now she understanding is not. Because he wanted to abandon you. He only he wanted to protect you. But that was never mentioned, never st- said. So you just had to understand the situation. So how I see it is that they're going to take it baby steps. He wants to be in her life. And she wants to make up for lost time. So I thought, okay, Nicole. like You're, You and your dad doing daughter and, and, and daughter and father moments. you know, And I love that for you. This was amazing. I I benefited from this free therapy because, you know, therapy costs money. But, you know, there is resources out there to get the help that you need. And I like that they had this kind of moment for us as the viewers to, you know, take a part of this, you know, and create a dialogue. I loved it. 
We next, we get a scene with Alexia and Frankie, and it is so sweet. I'm like having, there's just so many sweet moments going on. Like, this is too much for my little heart to take. <laughs> so, Alexia's home with Frankie, and Frankie is helping Alexia cook. He's learning how to cook and become a little bit more independent all in baby steps. So, she's showing him how to make food, how to make rice, how to make Cuban food. And, you know... Alexia is now in the mind state to un- that she see the great importance of Frankie becoming independent because she is not always going to be there. So it was nice and super positive that she was teaching Frankie life skills that he will be able to have to take care of himself past her being there, you know? And that was such a sweet, sweet moment. And then we get the moment with Peter and his father Pedro. Okay. Peter Peter sometimes he comes off bratty to me. I'm like, Peter, you grown. Like you grow like I want him to you know, okay. It's gonna be a debate about this. You know, he Peter is with his dad and his dad is pretty much expressing what Alexia wants to express to him. But I think this was a strategy to have his dad say it because, you know, the boys, they want to blame the mom. They don't want to listen to the mom. And the dad is the hero. So the dad, is he's doing his role and being a parent to his son. And he suggests to Peter that, you know, you should help Alexia in the salon, you know, she takes a care of Frankie a lot, so she 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 would appreciate the help. And Peter is not having any of it. He's like, nah. And I don't know. I can see how it's a good thing to establish boundaries that you're an adult and you know this is your life and you want to make decisions of how you want to your life to be managed. But I don't know, I would always have a little soft spot with mom. Like, if my mom says, I need help, like, you can help. You can do something, you know. I'm not saying do that forever, but come on. Like, I want to see him do something nice for his mom. I've never seen him do anything nice. Only every time we see him in a scene with Alexia, he's being super bratty. And it's such a turnoff. It's such a turnoff. And, you know... We actually hear a side of Peter saying, you know, he can't take it anymore. He wants to go to Puerto Rico. You know, he feels that his mother is being hypocritical because, you know, she was told not to be with his dad. And now here he is doing the same thing. And she wants to give all this judgment to him, which is fair enough. And it's interesting. Alexia has to learn through this moment to see now what her family saw for her and now with her son. And but I don't want I don't want to see Peter having issues with his mom. His, his the mom went through so much. I'm like child, give your mom a break. Like sometimes, okay, even if you don't want to do anything at the salon, don't give her a hard time, a difficult time. Like it, she's just wanting to see the best for you. And if you really think that girl's the best for you, the one that send you in a situation to be in jail, like honey, like sweetie, like seriously, seriously. We then get to see a scene with Gertie and she's preparing for the party, the melting pot party. But we know it's going to be a meltdown. And I'm telling you, the details, oh my God, the details, the decor, the vibe, girl, if, okay, if Gertie doesn't make it another season in the Housewives of Miami, for sure. For sure, she has gonna going to have opportunities of her doing uh, a show just to showcase her designing, her event planning. And of course, Larsa, she was cute. Larsa was like, oh, I want to get in on this. I want to get into event planning with Gertie. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Gertie is definitely, if she doesn't make it on this show, she's going to make it. If not, if Bravo doesn't create this show, certainly uh h hgtv is gonna take her certainly tlc will take her like someone will do it don't go on we i don't know if you want to go on we tv though Mm, mm. but definitely some major network is gonna see her work and say oh we want to make this into a show because the vibe 
Like, what's the best part of a party is not only the people, the food, but also let it be a vibe, like a nice vibe, a nice ambiance, you know? It was certainly per- good fight, okay? We then, oh my God, but also so I want to add this note. Uh, um, okay, for the reunion, I hope we have some gratified moments because it is, her work is so phenomenal. And let this be a note for the people who plan the the reunion sets. Take notes from her, please, because I didn't like the Miami, no, I didn't like the, the Potomac reunion set, which was inspired by Miami. No. <laughs> no 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 gertie's event is miami and insp- that's miami perfection in its perfection okay and so we then get a scene with the girls starting to enter into the party and larsa she comes in and she's like I want to help Adriana. I want to really get her in a in a in a place where she can resolve with the girls. And you know, Larsa, she wants to help Adriana. And she wants to help Adriana. And Julia, I was struck by Julia. Julia, she makes it click. She's trying to bond with these girls. And I'm like, good for you, Julia. I need you to bond with these women because I want you to establish yourself and your friendship with them. And Julia said to the girls that, you know, she hasn't been blindly supporting Adriana. Like, she makes it known to Adriana that she wants her to apologize and only apologize and not saying but or adding anything to it. Don't add any sauce to it, okay? And so when Adriana comes to the party, I'm like, okay, okay. She 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 comes cool, you know. Her ankle is not broken anymore. She's good. And I'm like looking at the girl's fashion. And their fashion is giving what it's supposed to give. This, I'm telling you, is the best dress franchise. Like, guys. Miami is doing it way better, okay, than these other girls. And, you know, Larsa, she comes up with a brilliant idea. She's like, let's just compliment Adriana. Let's compliment her so hard that she doesn't want it anymore. And Larsa is giving all these affirmations, saying, you're beautiful. You're better looking than Beyonce. And, you know, Adriana, she's eating it up. She's eating it up. She loves it. She loves it. This is what she wanted. And I think Larsa is just hilarious. I'm like, Larsa, you're becoming a fun girl here. I like that. And, you know, Larsa is like, you know, the comment was made out of desperation. And Larsa and Nicole agree on something, you know. They both see that. And finally, they get to, you know, you know, they mend their things and they're good. And all, uh, and I'm like happy to see this, but I'm like, when are these other girls gonna get here? So the other girls they get here, and Adriana immediately apologizes to Marisol, and you know I'm like, okay, good strategy because Marisol, you know, she's been drinking, she has her cocktails, she's ready to receive what you have to say, but you know these girls are not gonna accept it. I feel like these girls they already have made up their mind. And I'm just enjoying and get, getting the vibe of the party. I wish I could be a fly in the wall or at least a, a person invited to this party. I would love to come to this party. It was just so beautiful. And, you know, Kiki, she's having fun. She's giving life. I'm like, Kiki's a good person to be at the party. She's all about fun. And, you know, they're sitting at the table and, you know, the seating arrangements are strategic, was strategically made so that these girls are going to have to talk to Adriana. And there's no wiggle room around that. And, you know, Alexia, she tries, you know, Alexia gives Adriana her props and says she loves her song, but she doesn't, I don't like you, which is okay and honest because, you know, she can fake the funk. Uh, and I'm like, you know, at least Alexia, she acknowledges Adriana because I don't think it's good to like pretend that the person is not there when you're sitting at the table together. You know, it's good that you can at least be cordial. So Alisa finally arrives to the party and I love her outfit. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Lenny who? <clears throat> she looks so beautiful. 
So finally, the girls at the table, they're all together, and Gertie wants to give a toast. But all the girls are just hyping up Gertie, saying how beautiful the party is. Alexia saying, this is how, what I wanted for, for my wedding. And then Nicole saying, you need to do my wedding. And all the girls are giving so much positive affirmations to Gertie. And Gertie is like sick of it. She's like, I want to speak. I want to get my two cents in. And so Gertie starts her speech, and it's actually an emotional toast dedicated to Adriana. She she wants everyone not to pile on to Adriana, and she understands the hard times that Adriana is going through, but she wants this to be a moment for her to be vulnerable and to really speak to these girls' hearts. And so Adriana, she gets up and she gives an apology. This apology, she wasn't crying, she wasn't too emotional, but she was trying to acknowledge the wrongs that she did to these girls without giving so much feedback or back talk about the situation. She just owns the fact that she was wrong and wrong, period. You know, and you know, Alexia makes it very clear to Adriana. She's like, you can't keep doing this and get away with this. Like, you, it's like hard for me to understand why you make these comments because you know how much I struggled with Frankie. Like, Alexia makes it clear to say that, you know, Adriana, she knew Frankie before the accident and after. So for her to make a comment like that, how can she accept that? And Alexia, she cried. You know, I hate to see Alexia cry because she, she, she cries like, her whole body is showing this emotion and it's just so hard to see and you know she says that action speaks louder than words and she's right i mean these girls do not have to accept your apology adriana just because you feel ready to give it doesn't mean they're ready to accept it marisol definitely does not accept the apology because she felt like why would you repeat about a scenario that happened long time ago about a man who doesn't love me that i'm not even thinking about anymore and you know adriana i she 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 said that her add makes her repeat things and i'm like no that's not an excuse adriana you can't do that and you know julia is playing it smart julia is not defending adriana's battles okay she will be there to help her you know lick her wounds but she's not defending her battles because she doesn't want to get hurt you know she's allowing you know this be that moment that happens she doesn't agree with the pile on she doesn't like it but it does not mean it's not warranted like it doesn't come out of nothing they're not bullying her you know marisol she even tells i was like and kind of weird thing to say Marisol tells that for her to be silent for a year and I'm like that's harsh like I, I she's allowed to have her voice but she has to understand her voice what she says has consequences okay what you say is so powerful and it can determine who wants to be around you if you're speaking nonsense ah please let no one have nothing to do with you and let you be all nonsense on your own on the side so i was kind of feeling it for adriana but i feel like adriana what you said was pretty bad so i feel like this is where you take it in and you understand your wrongs and realize that these girls will not have to accept your apology lisa she wants to speak okay and this is the second time that we see lisa trying to speak in this group of girls because it's so hard to get your voice to be heard and you know lisa she's like shut up and she speaks and she speaks to defend adriana and she says that adriana is genuinely sorry and i felt like this is good for it to be coming from lisa than in opposed to julia because i feel like it wouldn't be as received the same way because everyone knows that julia is a ride or die for adriana lisa is a little bit neutral she has a relationship with all the girls and it's balanced so it's good to for it to come from a balanced person and you know they say everything happens for a reason and they cheers but alexia is not having that she's like nah and i'm like man it's they go and they take their pictures and then that's when I learned that, oh, this is the last episode. And I was not ready for that. And so I started to see, you know, they take a screenshot of the girl and the, the girls and they say what they're going through, what's the, an update. And I'm like, 
oh my god this is the final episode i was not ready for that no ma'am and so adriana her friendship with alexia is still off as well as marisol so it's not no they haven't meant things yet but her music career is booming like she's doing well she started to record with emilio estefan so her future is bright marisol she is starting a cocktail line with a miami celebrity so i felt like we this was this was that moment like this was going to happen because she went hard for the drinks all season long and i'm like what's the reason like is this the gag or what we then get to see gertie's update and it is she's finally taking a vacation to new york i'm like uh, i'm like gertie doesn't really have any issues i feel like this season for gertie she has been you know a supporting housewife like she's been supporting everyone in their situation so I'm not saying that we have to see hardships on the franchise, but I felt like we could see more of her work, her professional life, even though she's trying to balance and not do that so much. So, mm, Gertie's update was like a a little bit, not so much going on. I wish they say, oh, she's doing an event planning for Beyonce. Like, that would have been so epic, so cool of an update. Julia, she's rekindling her relationship, going to Europe, doing backpacking and i'm like okay it's cute we know we believe in your relationship you don't have to prove us anything but the sad update of course i have to mention is martina being diagnosed early in january with stage one breast and throat cancer oh my god i'm looking forward to the updates from the reunion to what she has to say about this because you know we love martina we love martina we are martina fans over here guys so i hope they get through this and you know they can move forward and adopt a child or you know just focus on the relationship whatever works best for them with alexia she finally gets to have her honeymoon with her man in greece and then peter crash the honeymoon and he's actually now a single man i don't know if he's still single now in the recording of this episode of this recap but uh, according to the update um episode this episode he's single okay now with larsa pretty much her update she's in a relationship i'm like girl she's always gonna keep a man so i'm not even worried about larsa but i enjoyed her this season because i felt like you know, she had issues, she resolved the issues, and she became fun. Nicole, her update is so boss. It's like, damn. You know, they were looking to sell their home, and they had the magic number of $40 million, And they sold their home to Jeff Bezos' mother for $44 million. $44 million. That is awesome. So I can't wait to see their new home. I would love to see more rooms of it. You know, I want to see more. We then get an update with Lisa. And I feel like Lisa's update, I mean, we all see it in the blogs. We all see it in the articles. Like her relationship with Lenny is becoming more complex because of the divorce proceedings and so forth, you know. And, you know, they had to co-host a Halloween party together. And apparently she didn't want to do that. But she looked hot. But, of course, Lenny has to do his spin on it and, you know, put out an article that's antagonizing her. That's what, according to Lisa says, but come on. Oh, Lord. But, hey, 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 where's the update with Kiki? I need to know what's going on with Kiki. I feel like, okay, the friends of, like, um... Adriana and Marisol, we got an update from them, but I would like an update with Kiki. Kiki was in every episode this whole fr- this whole season, so why are we not getting an update on Kiki? Kiki could come be in Housewife if she wants to. Only if she wants to. If not, she could continue bringing the friend of that she is because she does a great job at it. And then we're spoiled, guys, with a quick sneak peek of reunion. The set alone blows out all the other franchises reunion set i thought it looked immaculate the girls look immaculate i love the opening part andy is like nicole do you recognize the reunion set i say yeah but larsa do you recognize this reunion set and i'm like the shade of it already 
already guys we are not ready we are not prepared okay oh my god so that was the recap of the real housewives of miami i hope you enjoy please like because i appreciate the like please share because i appreciate the share and come on subscribe join us i'm so appreciated of all of you who subscribe and continue to support me in doing these recaps for all these shows that we like to watch together like come on guys join the crew take care and have a good night good weekend and you know be awesome and spread as much kindness as possible love you guys bye